Hey everybody, welcome back. We are on Unit 5, the long-run consequences of stabilization policy. Now, technically speaking, Unit 5 is looking at both the short-run and the long-run consequences of stabilization policies. Keep that in mind, okay? Because this particular video is going to be focused mainly on the short run. What is this video? This video is focused on the Phillips curve. That is subunit 5.2. This is simply going to be part one, okay, of subunit 5.2. We're going to have a few videos on 5.2. In this video, we're talking about the short run Phillips curve, okay? First of all, what the heck is the Phillips curve? The Phillips curve is a curve to illustrate the relationship between the inflation rate and the unemployment rate. That's super important, okay? Guys, all the way back in Unit 2, we found out there are three things macroeconomists are obsessed about, and that is GDP, the inflation rate, and the unemployment rate. And so here we go. We're going to have a graph that is focused on two of those three things, the inflation rate and the unemployment rate. So that's what the Phillips curve is focused on. So later on in this video, you'll see me put inflation rate there and unemployment rate. But to fully explain the short run Phillips curve, I want to bring back our old friend, the ASAD model. I've got price level on the vertical, real GDP on the horizontal. Now, right now, I don't have an LRAS curve, but I have put where YF is. Once again, what is YF? It is full employment output. So I am saying that this, this level of output up to that point is full employment uh, output. I just think it's nice to have that little reference right there. The only lines I got, though, are the SRAS and the AD. And we need to know, guys, that our economy is in equilibrium where these two curves intersect. And another way to say this, guys, is we are always on our SRAS curve. We are not always on the LRAS. We are always on the SRAS curve, okay? So I've got my SRAS, short run aggregate supply, and my aggregate demand curves. Here's a question I like to ask to my students. Which one of those is more unstable, the total production line or the total spending line? And the answer is AD, the total spending line. That is much more, un, uh, much more unstable, okay? It shifts far more, okay? So what we kind of should think about is aggregate demand shifting around. Sometimes it shifts to the right. That would be boom times. That would give us an output above YF. We would have an inflationary gap at that time, okay? So you can think about it as shifting to the right. Other times, aggregate demand shifts to the left. When we go into a recession or boom times, we get an intersection point, intersection point sorry, that is less than full employment output. So I just want you to kind of think about AD shifting both ways. It's what's un, more unstable out of those two curves. Now, I want to make a little point here, okay, in case we get confused. Right now, as this video is being shot, we've got COVID-19 crisis in our country. And it is a major aggregate demand shock. Now, some students might say, okay, yes, it's an aggregate demand shock. It's a total spending shock. We are spending less. But isn't it also a total production shock? Isn't produ production also changing? And guys, this is something that's just kind of central to economics. When AD shifts to the left, which is what is happening, okay, in a major way it's shifting to the left, and we call it a demand shock, Total production is absolutely going to fall. There's no doubt about it, all right? And that's what our graph shows. We would move along our SRAS curve to the left. So when total spending drops, guys, total production is going to follow. It's more a question of what was driving things, okay? What was leading in the dance, okay? They're both going the same direction, but who is leading? And this is very much an aggregate demand shock, okay? So AD is shifting to the left, total production is dropping, but it's not the thing that is leading this whole thing. It's the demand falling off that is leading everything. So again, what's more unstable, AD. AD, I want you to think about is kind of shifting back and forth, moving us into inflationary gap and back to recessionary gaps. Now, as we look at that, we get an indication of the relationship between the inflation rate and the unemployment rate. Now, I'm going to go ahead and put that on our Phillips model right now. So, inflation rate, and guys, understand, that says inflation rate. Please never put interest rate on that vertical axis. Over here, unemployment rate, okay? The unemployment rate. So, as we see AD shifting, let's think about this. If AD goes to the right, the inflation rate's going up, okay? And what's happening to the unemployment rate? 
Well, AB shifts right, real GDP is increasing, we're going to produce more, so the unemployment rate's going to go down. Ah, inflation going up, unemployment down. Inverse relationship. When AD shifts to the left, guys, price levels going down, we're going to see the inflation rate come down. Okay? In fact, this model actually says we're going to get deflation. We'll see how the Phillips curve gives us a little more nuance around this, and we can see things like disinflation. Don't worry, I'll follow up on that in another video. But anyhow, AD shifting left, think just, just right now, think inflation rate's going down, real GDP is going down, so what's happening to the unemployment rate? It's going up again inverse relationship. And so that is the key that we want to pull away, from, that we want to take away when we think about the short run Phillips curve. There is an inverse relationship between these two things. Now you're going to see this line drawn different ways, sometimes just as a linear line, other times kind of as a curved line. The big thing is the slope is negative, representing an inverse relationship, representing that when one of these two things goes up, the other one goes down. I'm just going to draw it mainly as a linear line. That is my short run Phillips curve. And again, guys, that was the original Phillips curve. When Phillips put this forward, that was the curve showing this inverse relationship. But over time, we got another curve that's coming in another video called the long run Phillips curve. But in the short run, if we ever get a question about the short run relationship between these two variables, we go, oh, well, the short run Phillips curve tells me that, and that shows me an inverse relationship, which we very much understand from our learning about the ASAD model. Anyhow, hope that made sense to you. We'll see you in the next video.